I'm Scott Allen Miller. And I'm Dominica Miller. And we are still here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And today we're heading out to go for that walk that I promised you before in the Japanese gardens here in the city. This is the largest Japanese gardens in the world outside of Japan itself. So this is pretty important uh, and a very uh, significant cultural site here in Buenos Aires. So we've been told we have to go do this and it looks amazing. I did a walk by on the video the other day. So we're actually gonna head into the gardens and let you know what it cost, what we liked and all the things that you can do right after that bump. All right, let's start with getting into the Japanese gardens. You probably are gonna to wanna to take an Uber or a taxi there because the entrance is in an area that's a little bit far away from most of the places you're likely to have an Airbnb or a hotel. I did walk there from Hollywood, but it's a bit of a walk. Most people are not gonna to wanna to go that far, but it is in the botanical area. So if you happen to be in that area. Now it does cost something to get in. Unlike most of the activities here in Argentina, especially the parks and the botanical garden area, it is not free. So that's just something to be aware of. It's also super busy. You go to the parks, you've seen my videos. I'm out in the parks. They're basically empty. I mean, there's people using them, but there's a lot of open space and you can just wander about and enjoy yourself in a big open space. The Japanese gardens are pretty much always packed and it's a good thing they're charging as much as they are because there's just too many people in there. Uh, but it's great that they're getting so much use. The current price at the time that we're doing this, and of course prices don't make a lot of sense or aren't gonna make sense for very long because of the hyperinflation situation, they're gonna change very quickly. But the current price was 4,500 pesos which comes out to a little bit under $4 per person to get in. So the two of us, it was somewhere between seven and $8 uh, for us to go. Uh, so you go into the gardens and it was, in just the moment you step in, it was beautiful. Yeah, it's really, it's just peaceful and pretty. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people were very respectful of it and it was very quiet. And, and this is, while it's Argentina and it's way more quiet than Nicaragua, it's still louder than the United States, for example, I think. I have not. Maybe, maybe it's about the same. Um, but it was it was very quiet in there. It's very nice, and they they have bridges and islands and, and fountains and waterfalls and flowers. They have an exhibit of trees that survived the nuclear blast at Hiroshima, uh, and they they move them there uh, in a small garden, and they're still alive, which is. I actually cool. think it's uh, they're the descendants of trees. Oh, maybe that survived the Hiroshima bombing. Uh, and um, there's a restaurant in there. There's a number of things uh, to do. So, I mean, you, you'd probably want to allow, I would think, about an hour to walk around the gardens. Of course, you can spend as much time as you'd like, but I think uh, an hour once you're inside is probably pretty good. You can see everything in an hour if you want to sort of contemplate your surroundings and, and relax for a while. Um, two hours, maybe. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's at a slower pace and with a crowd. Uh, if if it's crowded the way that it was uh, when we visited, then um, yeah, you're going to need more time just because you have to wait because there are narrow foot bridges and there are people taking their Instagram photos in the perfect so spot. So many Instagram photos. So many yeah. people doing that. We say as we're YouTubers walking around with a camera. Yeah, so we, understand. We try. We don't stand and and take. 20 photos and yeah five. there's like, there's some really tight paths with a lot of just posing going on so you can end up waiting several minutes and the entire place is backing up waiting for one person taking a picture so that is and it was a lot of that it wasn't like this one person did that no it was around every corner there was someone doing that so um but that it is it appears from what i could tell there were so many people that were like super dressed up I think that a lot of people go there for their photos for something. Um, yeah. So it seems like I think that's a major draw of the place. It is beautiful. And, and you can tell that they have it set up so that uh, there's something to see no matter what time of year you're there. So, uh, for example, we're at the um, very beginning of spring here in Argentina. And um, there were still flowers blooming, but the trees are not in bloom. 
I am told that when um, when the cherry blossoms are in bloom, it's one of the most amazing times to to be in the Japanese garden, oh, and sure. we're too early for that. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but it was still beautiful, and even the trees with with like the naked trees were pretty. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everything. It was it was so well done, and it was it was made. I don't know the year, quite some time ago. Um, for the visit of the Japanese emperor. And so he was, he was coming to Buenos Aires, and so they made this immense garden uh, for his visit, and he went and saw it. So it was, uh, they put a lot of effort into it. It's definitely very well thought out. And um, I found all the little streams running through, just, it was beautiful. It's like so much care, and obviously they put so much effort into maintaining it. It's impeccably maintained. Yes which is what you would expect from a Japanese garden because it's part of the aesthetic, but it's, it really is um, so ordered and lovely. And my favorite part were, were the giant koi. Yes, yeah, so I koi. love the giant koi because I feel like um, koi have personality and they also like to skim the top of the water because you can buy koi food. We didn't do that. There were plenty of people and these were chubby, well fed chubby boy. koi fish. Um, really like big, big koi. <laughs> um, they're just, they're so cute. I, I really love to watch koi swimming around and yep. they have all different colors and they have other fish in there they did too. Have other fish. There's like catfish. Like, um, yep, there's catfish and I feel like maybe perch maybe I I, i'm not sure what they were but they were something that um i would like perch or sunfish like if we were in new york is what those look like mm. um but I, I don't actually know what those were i can only identify catfish of course <laughs> but yeah it was it was all just very beautiful and uh we actually met some guatemalan youtubers who were there i assume they're youtubers they were there two of them with filming equipment. And one of them had the DJI Pocket 3. It's the first time I ever got to hold one. I actually went up and talked to him and he's like, oh, you want to see it? And he handed it to me and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the one that I have in the United States. <laughs> it's it's going to be great for the show once I finally manage to get it here. But uh, now that I've actually held it, uh, very excited about that. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, we did, after we went and did all the gardens, we filmed a ton. So for those who are interested in seeing like just loads of the gardens, we're going to show a lot of it once we're done talking. I mean, we're showing some of it now, but we're going to show a ton. So stay around for that. You're going to get to see exactly what the gardens are like. Hopefully that turned out really well. Uh, and um, there's a restaurant there that does, of course, sushi and a lot of other uh, Japanese specialties. So we took the time to go hang out there for a little while. We are uh, doing a uh, tango experience later in the evening. So this was, uh, they closed pretty early because obviously the gardens at night, not super interesting. They don't have lights on it and stuff. So they close about sundown. Uh, so, but if you can get in, you can do an early kind of dinner or like an afternoon tea sort of thing. It's not really meant for a large meal just because of the, the hours that they are open, but they have this beautiful Japanese restaurant there with views of the gardens. So if you're looking uh, to spend a bit more time and really enjoy the gardens and really, if you're like in the Disney Universal Studios kind of crowd and you like the really steeped experience that you get in like the World Showcase in Epcot, well, this is kind of like that in Buenos Aires. You want a Japanese afternoon where you've got the restaurant, the beautiful setting, so much work put into a large area uh, and you can really get into it this is going to be perfect for you just like we like doing when we're in epcot going to one of the world showcase countries enjoying a restaurant overlooking all the work that they've done this completely gives you that i found the food very reasonable as well i mean the, the quality was very good it was excellent i thought the prices were surprisingly good i don't know if it was because we got the vegetarian sushi that it was so like obviously that is cheaper than than fish mm -hmm. but um it yeah I, I found it reasonable for for quite a bit of sushi yeah um we comfortably split it between the two of us and yeah it was good and it was it was actually a style like all of it was i hadn't had that style before mm -hmm. It was different. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it was yeah. different. Now, not, I also, not like a California roll. we split three rolls of vegetarian, and then I got one roll of salmon, 
And the style of salmon that I got, the Sakura roll, rolls, are the same or almost the same as what I get in Nicaragua. But I honestly feel like the price was the same as we pay in Nicaragua, which is reasonable except for the fact that in Nicaragua we're going to a not authentic Japanese restaurant. We're going to someone who's doing sushi in a Japanese style as best they can in the middle of a random city where they're just doing that. And this was the official restaurant of the Japanese gardens in a very, very um, specialty location in the middle of Buenos Aires. So I I would have guessed the price would have been double what it was and, and to be the same as a decent uh, Japanese restaurant in in another low cost location without the gardens. I almost think it's a deal. Honestly, it was the price of um, grocery store sushi or cheaper. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the US, for it, sure cheaper. Yeah, than, yeah. I think it was um, in the U.S. You're you're gonna pay at least eight to ten dollars per roll in the grocery store, and I think this was under that. Yeah, it was. Yep, and it was quite good. Yeah, very good. Uh, and the service was excellent. And the view, of course, we got to sit right on the garden. And if you like people watching, which is the Buenos Aires thing, of course, you get to people watch all the people in the garden. So it kind of has that cafe feel as well, because the garden is always busy. Yes, and we sat outside. Yeah, we sat outside. It was a beautiful day. We had, uh, at, at the very beginning of spring, we had a nice, sunny, warm day. And so that worked out um, just about perfect, I would say. So. I say that the, the Japanese gardens as a place to go and thing to do here in Buenos Aires, I put very, very high on my list. I agree. It is not overrated. It is yep. very beautiful. Um, it, the maintenance is amazing. It's just, yeah, it was very pleasant. It's just a very, if you, if you like parks and the outdoors and you're looking for like just a very tranquilo <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It was yep. not overrated. I was surprised. Yeah, cause... so many things get hyped and then you go and you're like, okay, yeah, I saw that. Now I can move on. Nope, this it's was not... really beautiful. Yep, worth worth the hype that it gets. So uh, recommend that. And it was very inexpensive, right? Mm -hmm. Below $4 to get in. Absolutely. I wish they'd actually raise it and have a few, <laughs> a little bit and, fewer um, people. Under the age of 12, no matter where you're from, is free. Yep. And if you're over 65? Yep. And if you no, are... if you're over 65 in Argentina, oh, Argentinian. okay, then it's free or under 12, anybody. There were no restrictions on that. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and it's obviously cheaper if you're Argentinian, um, as it should be. So it's uh, it's very nice. Highly recommended. Uh, we are going to leave you with a bunch of video. I hope. Um, of beautiful scenes of the garden. Enjoy them. Uh, get down there before we do that and leave your questions. Actually, it's great to li let it play in the background and ask your questions, leave your comments, give us a thumbs up and all that. That really helps. Uh, and uh, of course, if you'd like to send in a video question or comment, we have all the information in the show notes on how to do that. Or if you need to contact us by email, again, all that's down in the show notes. People ask me all the time, it's in every single show. Just just look down at the notes on the show. Everything's in there, including all of our other channels. So if you do that, and if you're uh, willing to support the channel, we're going to do that now instead of after all the stuff. We're going to put up the information up above. You can buy us a coffee on the website, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to us. It's like Patreon. It helps pay for our trips, the cameras, the software. It, it is expensive to do the show, and we're not sponsored. So you guys are our sponsors, and uh, it, we really appreciate all the support that we get from all of you. So thank you so much, and we will leave you with these beautiful scenes and music from the Japanese gardens in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and we will see all of you tomorrow. Stay with us as we continue through the beautiful Japanese garden of Buenos Aires.